What piece of microbiological knowledge should the whole world know, or should everybody in the world know about? I would say um, wash your hands and be careful in your food preparation. Okay, so very practical advice. I would say it's uh, the fact that not all organisms are pathogenic, yeah. and, uh, but for the pathogens, I think one of the most important things for people to know is uh, about antimicrobial resistance, yeah. which is very important. So uh, when that knowledge is gained, you can uh, question or ask your, uh, the, the rationale from your general practitioner, for example, why you've been given antibiotics, and that will help everyone to better use antibiotics, and uh, probably that will uh, reverse the current trend of uh, antimicrobial resistance. So I guess some of the problem is that people don't know that there's a problem, yeah. and it's that sort of previous step of making sure they know about the problem so that they can then think about how to fix the problem is yeah. the thing. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm. And um, there was a session today about uh, the One Health approach, and um, I like the punchline, which I tweeted, yeah. which is um, how, why, and when to use antibiotics is the real issue, and uh, people need to just know how, when, and why, so that when they know, they can ask questions. And when questions are asked, people tend to adjust their behavior to do the right things. Okay, basically. change their behavior around it as well. Yeah. What one piece of microbiological knowledge do you think that everybody in the world should know about? Ooh. Yeah, it kind of goes along with the first um, answer, like okay. bacteria are bloody awesome. They can survive anywhere, yeah. whether it's cold, whether it's too hot, whether there's, I don't know, toxins around or radioactivity. Mm. They can just do anything. So just the diverse hardiness of yes. them. Yeah, okay. I find that truly amazing, yes. And it is amazing, yeah. Again, I'd like to be greedy if I may. Go um, for it. First of all, in terms of medical microbiology, I would say the world has been changed by us adopting and using wisely vaccines. Long may that continue. And in terms of environmental microbiology, if I might, the biggest change that we could make globally for the well being of all societies and for economic development would be clean drinking water. It is simple, it's achievable. Do we choose to do that globally? And Hilary? Oh, they're, that, they're great answers. I'm a bit jealous now. I think I would say that remind people, or if they're not aware, that microorganisms, single celled life forms, first life forms on planet Earth, three and a half billion years ago, and from them, and from their growth, they shaped the entire planet and made it inhabitable with the rest of us, and they continue to be essential for every aspect of our daily lives. I guess that unbroken chain of replication all the way back to that first single-celled organism leads to everyone in the world. So it's a good thing yes. to know about. Yes, yeah. isn't it just <laughs> mind-blowing, actually? Yeah, fantastic. Well, I think what everyone knows about is the fact that bacteria can cause disease and that antibiotic resistance is a real problem. And there may be some populist dictators somewhere that don't believe that uh, indiscriminate antibiotic use is causing problems, but antibiotic resistance is a huge problem, particularly uh, uh, for aging populations in a developing world, because uh, bacterial infections uh, are not going to go away. And sadly, there's been very little development of new antibiotics or new antimicrobials in the last 30 years. So I think most people that read newspapers are aware of this problem. Okay. But hopefully we should make sure that everyone knows it. Yes. Okay. Yes. What is the one piece of microbiological knowledge you think everyone in the world should know about? Well, that's a very good question. And I think um, it's, it's something uh, I've been reflecting a lot. And I think that should be um, that we all came from microbes. Mm. So uh, what we know usually about evolution, what everyone knows, uh, it's as if um, my favorite comedian said, you know, if you have to uh, tell people about evolution, you're being a bit boring. You're saying, yeah, uh, well, basically, there was a big bang, and then we all came from monkeys. Straight up. Yeah. yeah. And I think if you tell people that we all came from microbes, that puts both microbiology and evolution and the whole natural world at different perspective. It makes people understand and try to think, but 
what is the similarities between microbes and us, what, uh, what was between the microbes and us, and, you know, everything, ecology of, of microbes, also whether they are friends or enemies, and what are the similarities between us and them, and, and, and how can we manage them. Everybody in the world, I would use microbes to illustrate evolution as the most successful process in, 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 in probably in the universe. Uh, uh, just life on Earth as it is, is almost four billion years old. So we, we have a process um, uh, based on the principle of evolution that is practically immortal. The products are ephemeral, but the process is so robust yeah. that it is practically immortal. It's four billion uh, years, right? Uh, yeah, I, yes, exactly. And, yeah. And, and we know that when the life started, when we have last universal common ancestor, that it, it looked very similar to a bacterium. Yeah. And it was a single-celled uh, organism that, 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 that reproduced its genetic and therefore f functional information and, and, and that's how the life started to grow like And eventually like became all of tree. us as well, you know, yeah. eventually reproduced into every human alive today, which is amazing. Yes, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> that, that we have a, a uninterrupted tree of life over four billion years, starting with something like bacterium and to the people like you and me talking yeah. now. Everyone should know that there are more microorganisms and on Earth, there are stars in the universe. Okay. They are trillion of million species in the world, and only one. Those are numbers that I cannot pronounce, but it's one to the ten to the thirty number of microorganisms on Earth, and there's one to the ten to the twenty-one stars in the universe. Wow. Okay. So that can give you an idea of the diversity of the microorganisms and the important roles that they are playing in the environment. Well, so they outnumber the stars, they outnumber all of us. Yeah. They are bigger yeah. than everything. Yeah, <laughs> and they are more diverse and we only know 99% of all the microorganisms mm. are not, no, we don't know what they are doing in the environment. So we just know that there's so much we have no idea about. Exactly, okay. exactly. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, that's a good question. Mm, actually, I think uh, microbe, Hmm. Never die. They never die because they can divide mm -hmm. and they can survive, and, uh, and also uh, they can enjoy uh, such a huge diversity among us in nature. And sometimes they can get to be enemies to each other, yes. but they can uh, cooperate as well. Okay. So this kind of uh, um, notion about the diversity and also they're helping each other, and also or sometimes uh, we can have a conflict. However, they have the good reason to solve all the problems. Mm. So I think we should learn a lot from those. Because, uh, yeah, the microbes. microbiological societies are not anything that people know much about outside of science, are mm -hmm. they? That they talk to each other, that they have a community. Yes. They have little wars and factions. Yes. But they do end up solving many of their problems very efficiently. Yep. Yeah. And I could say not only amongst the microbes, but also with the other organisms also. Like you can look at ourselves. Mm. So actually we are living together with a lot of microbes in inside as well, now on surface as well. So I think uh, without, without them, we cannot survive probably. Mm. So yeah. I think uh, from this sense, I think uh, ordinary people would understand how microbes are fascinating for work with yeah. them. So we need them more than they need us. Yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. We were helped for a long time and probably we will. So, um, yeah, sometimes they can be harmful. Mm. But if we can make it a control, I think we can have a real good harmony all together. Yeah, a wonderful harmonious relationship with exactly. the microbes in us and around us. Yep. I think uh, everybody should know the role of microbial communities in mm. our daily life. Because, okay, now we are getting aware of the role of the gut microbiota, but people that are not uh, familiar with microbiology is any in these years is getting more confident with the idea of having a gut microbiota functioning functionally developed etc and so I think this concept is already getting to the people but I think that um, in general people should know that also there are also other systems that are that are directly related to their life 
and these are for example uh, plant microbiome interactions so okay. microbiota living with crops for example and so with, I the, think our, with our food source in exactly. and around so their roots exactly so everything we eat is strictly related to microbial life okay. so I think this should yeah. be important that's a good one Whenever I give a talk to kids, I always make sure they uh, know that antibiotics are running out and that we really need um, to be careful with using them. So I guess to make sure everybody is aware that antibiotics are just for bacteria, not for viruses, um, and that you need to be make sure you follow the doctor's advice to them and we don't run out because then we're going to be in big trouble. Yeah, because we need those antibiotics, don't exactly. we? Exactly. And you give talks to children then about science? Yeah, I've done a couple of outreach talks with Surrey Imperial um, okay. to school kids, um, which has been quite fun. That's fine. What age is Young or uh, all ages? Yeah, I've done one for six formers, yeah. uh, which is good. And then I did one a couple of months ago for, I think, year five, year six. So okay. ten, ten yeah, year olds. Right. And they loved it. I had like all of their hands went up at the end. Wonderful. Tons great. of questions. And yeah, they're yeah. all fascinated by the bacteria. Lovely. <laughs> Oh, that's an interesting and, and difficult question. I think if I had to pick up one answer and one concept, it's the fact that microbes are everywhere. They are in us, they are in animals, they are in plants, they are in roots, they are in the soil, they are in oceans. We don't notice them because we usually don't see them for good reasons. Uh, but I, I think that people should take into account the fact that microbes are essential parts of ecosystems and they are suffering as much as the rest of living creatures uh, from you know the bad yeah the climate evolution crisis, ecological crisis. Uh, global warming pollution antibiotic spread in the environments and i think we are just starting to see the downsides of altering the microbial populations in ecosystems and that's going to be more and more visible unfortunately if we don't do anything. So I think it's an, an emergency as much as you know, global warming and, and other ecological issue at the moment. Microbes, the vision of microbes, wherever you go, in Europe, in Africa, people think microbes are bad things. Mm. They, they cause diseases. So I think we have to revert this and, and make people understand that microbes are essential. I mean, they were here before us, they will be here after us. Uh, and there are essential elements of ecosystems. Well, I, I guess I've done a lot of teaching and a lot of interacting with lay folks, and I, I think it's probably better known now than it was a few years ago, but for many people, the only thing they knew was that bacteria made you sick and you took an antibiotic and killed them and they went away. They had no sense of how many bacteria we have in our intestine, what an astonishing number that we're covered with bacteria, that they're absolutely everywhere. Uh, the microbiome, you know, is an influence on all kinds of factors of health. And I think uh, that part of uh, it is now better understood now, but I think there are many people, uh, you know, the world I live in is probably heavily still populated by people who have some amount of education. I think there are a lot of people who don't understand there's this unseen world out there. And the other thing for me that was important, I think, was that that's so much of evolution happened at the level of bacteria. Their first life 3.8 billion years ago, and eukaryotes didn't come around for a long time. So. It's not surprising that amino acid biosynthesis and principles of DNA replication and translation and ribosomes and everything were all worked out in, in bacteria. And I found it fascinating that, you know, especially in the earlier parts of my career, things like DNA repair and stuff like that, that the counterparts were either there directly as homologs in mammalian eukaryotic cells or there was convergent evolution and come to the same solution, but using a different protein or something. But the power of the bacterium as a model for other things. And both Miro and I did work with mismatch repair. I sort of got mutants in MUTES and MUTEL, which are key components of the post-replicative mismatch repair system that improves fidelity after DNA replication. And when I cloned them, um, I 
tried to publish it back to back. I contacted a group who I thought had the same group, gene. It was called Hex A, but from Streptococcus pneumoniae. And we could see there were homologs. And I tried to publish it, I think, in PNAS. And the reviewers said this was of absolutely no interest. That it should go in a specialty journal. So we published it in Journal of Bacteriology. The sequence came out, and my phone started to ring by people who were calling me to tell me that mammalian cells had a mute S homolog. Ironically, one of them was located, I think, on the other side, right beside di um, dihydrofolate reductase. And in the old days, we didn't know so much about DNA, so they'd sequenced in the wrong direction initially, and they had an, an ORF of unknown function. And, and since then, people went on. Within about a year, or less than two years, people had understood that hereditary non-polyposis colon cancer, which is now known as Lynch syndrome, or the familial susceptibility to colon, probably ovarian cancer, comes about in some cases by defects in the mismatch repair system and you accumulate mutations at a, a much higher rate. And that was a case where the work in bacteria directly informed the, our understanding of humans. So that was the other sort of aspect, microbes as microbes and their role in that, but also microbes as model systems to understand yeah, what happened in evolution and okay. gain insights into humans too.